Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And it's Positively Ernie, and I love doing the program and bringing you all kinds of good positive stories, particularly positive people who have a... a a way of sharing something with us that we can all learn, grow, and become better people. And I've got a very special person today. Her name is Laura Begley Bloom, and she is fantastic, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ernie. It's well, great to see you. you know, we go back a way, and, and, and Laura is, a, is an expert when it comes to travel, lifestyle. I mean, you're a great communicator. Um, people should know that, you know, you were editor-in-chief of Travel for Yahoo!, which was a great, successful online travel service. New York Times, Forbes, uh, Travel and Leisure. I mean, you've written so many articles, and you're still doing that. But, I mean, you know a lot about what's going on, and, and in particular travel. And a lot of people probably are saying, hey, you know what? I want to travel, but, you know, I'm just wondering these days, you know, where should I go? Where is it safe to go? Uh, there are a lot of questions about travel. I want to talk about that. We're going to start with that, and we're going to get into some other things. Um, tell me about travel today. How has it changed over the past, I don't know, 10, 10 years? Well, obviously, we had this little thing called a pandemic. Yeah. So that definitely changed travel because yeah. people weren't traveling for a few years. And so there really is this pent up demand. So people put a lot of trips on hold. They didn't travel. And I think it's given people a sense of carpe diem. They want to just get out and do those trips that they've mm -hmm. always dreamed about. They're not waiting any longer. And because they weren't traveling for a few years, they also saved up money. So people are taking pretty amazing yeah. bucket list trips and just a lot of trips because people just real have realized the value of travel, that it really is life affirming. It really is. I mean, when you think about it, whether it's for adults and particularly children, because we both have families, how great it is to learn about another culture, language, uh, traditions. I mean, it expands the world in so many ways. I think travel is one of the best things to do. What's the hot place right now where, where people want to go? Is it is it the islands? Do they want to go to a Caribbean? It all depends on, on the season. But in general, where do they want to go? Well, people want to go everywhere. Mm. Um, Japan is really hot Ooh. right now. Um, in fact, the exchange rate is really in our favor for mm -hmm. Japan. And so people have been traveling to Japan in droves. Another place that's hot, if you will, but very yeah. cold, is yeah. Antarctica. Yeah, I heard that. And it's everybody is going to Antarctica. And what is that? What's the drive? Well, the drive is that there are a lot of these expedition ships that have launched that make it, mm -hmm. e making it easier than ever to get to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. um, you can even fly to Antarctica oh. and just and zoom in and not have to deal with Drake's Passage. Mm -hmm. I've told you before about Lindblad Expeditions, mm -hmm. one of my favorite companies. I went to the Galapagos with them a couple of years ago. What a great trip, huh? Yes, they're doing they have some expedition ships, but they will also, you can also fly to Antarctica with mm. them. They have some special trips and it's just, it's a very special place. Um, but again, the world is our oyster. I just mm. got back from Turks and Caicos. Oh, I, I've I, been there. Love it. It's wonderful. Love and it's, there's so much expansion going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. I stayed at a great property called Beaches, oh, yeah. which is an all-inclusive. I went with my family. Mm -hmm. We learned to scuba dive oh, there at Beaches. You. And what's wonderful about when you stay there, if you're a yeah. scuba diver, it has some of the best scuba diving on the planet. Mm -hmm. And your dives are included in the rate. I think you can do two dives a day included in the rate. Well, speaking of rates, okay, mm. uh, you know, everybody wonders, you know, are prices better? Everything seems to be more expensive these days. So what about travel? Are there good deals out there? And, and how do you find them? How do you find them, Laura? I mean, there are some deals, mm -hmm. right? I was saying Japan is, yeah. you know, there are some deals. Of course, sure. it's going to cost you a little bit to get to Japan. That yeah. flight's not going to be yeah. cheap. But I think you just have to really be a savvy traveler and keep your eye on different websites. Uh, there's a site that I love called hopper.com, H-O-P-P-E-R, Hopper. mm -hmm. -E like a rabbit yeah, hopping hopper. along, com. hopper. Yeah. And um, they're really good. You can set, you can enter in you know, flights that you're interested in and let you know when things are going to go on sale or the optimum time to purchase something. It's a real, it's a real, I think it's a really great site just in terms of navigating rates. I like that. Okay. Hopper.com uh, travel. I mean, uh, cruises are very popular. I, I, I still hear people talking about cruises, cruises yes. and, and all kinds of cruises, the river cruises and, and the regular ones. Disney has a whole bunch of them. Um, they are that popular, aren't they? Cruises are wildly popular. Yeah. And I think you, there's just a lot of value for your money with cruises. 
Um, you know, and I've talked about them before. I love MSC Cruises. They've been launching some new ships. They just launched a new ship here out of Miami. They're an mm. Italian. Actually, they're European, but yeah. Italian family owns them. Uh, they're based out of Switzerland. Wow. But they're very glamorous, very European. You know, Royal Caribbean keeps expanding. They just launched the largest cruise ship you know, on the planet, which is like a floating city. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, when, when our kids were younger, you know, we had a couple of cruisers, but they were smaller ships. Today, they are floating cities. How how much bigger can they get, Laura? Well, you know, what's I think what's really interesting in cruises, uh -huh. and, I, and I love cruising. I think it's just, it's a great way to see the planet, to see a lot of places, and to do it easily, to mm. be able to jet around. Yeah, you don't have to jump around from room to room. And exactly, so and hotel, location hotel. to location. Yeah. You don't have to fly anywhere. Right. They'll just bring you to the next location. But I think what we're seeing a lot in the cruise industry is that ships are getting bigger and then they're getting smaller. There's another line I love called Windstar. Windstar. These, Windstar. these are small sailing yachts with you know around 125, 130 people. Ooh, I did one of cool. their trips through the Grenadines in the Caribbean. They are sailing to Iceland right now. And what's mm. really great about, you know, Iceland is very, Iceland. very popular. Yeah. And what's wonderful about sailing around Iceland is that you actually do sail around it. It's an island. Beautiful. And so when you go with a company like Windstar, mm. they'll take you around the island so you you avoid the traffic. Why does that sound expensive? I, I, I love what you're describing it's here. Not, it's not wildly expensive. I mean, not, I don't have the rates. It sounds that, a little more private, you know, to be on a smaller it ship. It is more private. The food is great. They have a partnership with the James Beard Foundation. Mm. So the food is top notch. When mm -hmm. I went on Windstar, I went out with the chef and went shopping on the island of Grenada in the local market. That's oh, the kind of thing man. you can do. And it's just, you get to know all of the passengers. Yeah. And I took my daughter. She was, I think she was five or uh -huh. four at the time. Good age. And, you know, they don't have kids clubs, but mm -hmm. it's real travel. You know, yeah. you really are experiencing the places and the people were so wonderful. It's, I really, I love that. But again, there's nothing wrong yeah. too with those big mama jama ships. I've done Absolutely. them and there's just anything that you can think of. There are so many activities. You know, um, when I'm thinking about travel, cause we took a lot of trips with our, our, our family, especially when they were very young and the memories that you build up from those trips, they last a lifetime. They to do. this day, you know, 10, 15 years later or, or more, you know, you're talking about these trips that you took. So the, the memories that you can create as a family unit, they're great. You have a chance to communicate better. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. private. You're alone. You know, the, it's a happy environment. Uh, I don't think you can say enough about travel. And, you know, we've, I think we've talked about mm. this before. For kids, yeah. travel is eye-opening and mind-opening. And there's actually research that shows that the more kids travel, mm -hmm. the better they do at school and, mm -hmm. the, and the more successful they are in life. So there really is a long-term effect. And I just think it makes, it just opens your eyes to the rest yeah. of the planet. I think when you get out there and you see people, you realize the, everybody on the globe, they're just like us. Well, you know what? We need more of that today, Laura. We do. We really do. We need more uh, understanding. You know, um, I did a story recently about, you know, when you're bilingual, uh, how important that is in terms of the way you think. You're, you're more creative. Uh, you're more patient. You're more focused. And particularly for young people, based on what you were talking about travel, it's the same principle. They end up appreciating culture better. They think about other people in the world it's true. And appreciating and wanting to communicate. We need that communication. So, I mean, you know, all of these things kind of play in together. Let me ask you this, because, uh, you know, a lot of people watching, listening are saying, I want to travel. But if you've been watching the news lately, you know, there's some hairy stories out there uh, about what's going on in terms of safety. So because you're an expert, and you do a lot of travel. Um, uh, Give, give us a little comment in terms of how you feel things are right now in terms of comfort, being safety, being able to travel. Well, I do think that you need to be mindful wherever you're going. And uh, one of the best resources that you can turn to is the State Department. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have reports on countries. They keep information listed up to the minute, yeah. even regions within companies, countries. So you really want to keep your eye on that. And, you know, if there's some unrest somewhere, maybe you want to avoid it. Yeah. You know, I also think it's really smart to get travel insurance. Mm-hmm in case anything goes wrong. And I have to say, I used to not be a person who got travel insurance. Really? And then in the last few years, I've started purchasing it because I realized that it's just a good thing to have and it's it's not very much money. It's a good point because a lot of people 
have not been getting the insurance. That's the thing. And I think you think, oh, it's going to cost me, you know, tons and tons of money. I mean, mm. I went to Greece and I think my travel insurance was $60 for a two week bad. trip. It's really not bad. Yeah. And so it just, you know, it's, it's an extra, I don't know, just a, an extra kind of guarantee and just puts your mind at ease. If you get hurt, if something goes wrong, if you need to get out of yeah. the country, they're going to help you out. And of course there's all different kinds of insurance packages. There's a company I really love called Insure My Trip. Insure In My Trip. Insuremytrip.com. Okay. Uh -huh. And what they are is they're sort of an aggregator. And so that's the company I always use. And so I call them up and they'll say, okay, well, you're, oh, you're going here. This is the this is the brand that's going to give you the best package. Mm. And so I think that it's really helpful. And I just, I'm, I always- I'm glad you're, sure you know, you're, you're feeding us all of these different websites and places to go, because that really is important. Because people will hear something in an interview and say, wait a minute, where do I go for that. So I'm glad you're doing that. Um, travel is great. We're talking about, you know, getting on a plane or, or whatever it is, you know, and just traveling on a ship. But some people think that staycations are still fun. So talk a little bit about your experiences with staycations, where to go, what to do, and the benefit of, of just hanging around. Well, I think staycations or even just looking in your own backyard. Yeah. In fact, I do a series for TripAdvisor. I don't know if you even know this. It's called The Weekender. No. And it comes out every other week. on, And it comes out Trip as a Advisor? newsletter. On, as a, It's a newsletter and it comes out on TripAdvisor.com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got more info on my website, LauraBegleyBloom.com. Okay, there about you go. It. Um, wait, wait, give that uh, address again. One oh, more. Laura Begley Bloom dot com. Got it. And um, so what I, it's and it's really it's a lot of fun. It comes out every other week and it's all about trips that are within a couple hours driving distance of um, New York, but also, you know, around the East Coast. Um, also staycations here in New York City for anybody who lives in New York City. Sure. There's a West Coast version too. I don't do the West Coast version, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I just think that, you know, it, it has really opened my eyes to just how many wonderful things are just right here that you don't have yeah. to travel far to find. Right. You know, I truly believe that wherever I go, I can always find something that's great. Well, you know, I, I think you're right about that. And, and when you when you consider all the opportunities, uh, you don't have to go that far. But even just the break, you know, the old line, it's just a change of scenery. But it's true. You go somewhere and it's a different environment. And it, it could be a one day, two days, three day break or, or longer. And you just feel like you've just changed your view of whatever is on your mind. Yep. You have a fresh attitude, a fresh approach. I, I'm, I'm very high on that. I think it's great. I agree with you. You know, and it doesn't have to be fancy or complicated. You mm. could go stay at a, you know, at a Marriott or a Holiday Inn that has a pool and just splash around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking of companies that I like, there's another company I like called Outdoorsy.com. Outdoorsy? Outdoorsy. O-U-T-D-O-O-R-S-Y. -O -O okay. And what this is, it's a really interesting concept. You can, it's, it's sort of like an Airbnb, but for RVs. And you can rent other people's RVs. Oh, and oh so, I like that idea. Right? It's, so it's yeah, people- I've always wanted to do that. Right, it's people that aren't using, you know, it's Airstreams, RVs. Yeah. Yeah. motor homes it's people that aren't using it and so then you can just you, you know rent it for a weekend it's not that expensive it's a really great way to get out and have a fun uh, vacation for that. not much money I yeah like that. I mean, i've always thought of the idea of how great it would be to have that big van and just driving it and having your family on board and then and there are places where you can stop yeah and you can stay overnight yep but you know you have to follow some kind of a route Right. I mean, of yeah. course, there are routes that you can follow, and then you can do, like, I think they call it boondocking, where you can just kind of pull up anywhere. Mm. Um, interestingly, Walmart, most Walmarts will let you park in their parking lot, which is a little mm. fun cool fun fact of yeah. our being. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but I think, you know, it's, it's just, it's a great way to get out and, you know, see the so country. So many great ideas. Laura, let me ask you, you, you certainly hear a lot about artificial intelligence. Yeah. AI is everywhere, changing every industry, whatever it happens to be. So looking at the future of travel, uh, how will AI impact that in terms of, you know, how we plan our trips, uh, some virtual trips? How about out of space? You know, people are talking about, you know, going in, into space and those trips are available now, a little expensive. But will, will the future bring us a lot of extraordinary ways to travel and explore? Well, I think AI, just from a, you know, a reality point of view, it, it's, a lot of companies are using it to power 
chat bots on their websites. I mean, I sometimes get a little frustrated with it because I mm. want the real person to mm -hmm. help me out. Yeah, me I just too. don't, I don't want to be fed information yeah. that everybody else is getting, you know, from AI. So I think there's a, you know, I think it's making, tra you know, like a lot of things with technology, it's making travel easier, but then, you know, taking away some of the specialness, sure. if that's a word yeah. of it, um, because I just think that there, you know, you just, you just can you can't underestimate the power of humans, right? And a human helping True. you plan, a human helping give you information mm -hmm. versus a bot. And, you know, they're getting smarter and smarter, mm. but, you know, they're giving inf the same information to everybody. And, you know, I, I mean, I have to say, like, I love using an old school travel agent, you know, or travel <laughs> advisor to help me plan That was going to be one of my next questions. <laughs> Tra my, my dad had a travel business in Boston. And it was, really? it was Greek Greek travel, and uh, he was pretty successful at it. And uh, and I remember going to the travel agency when I was a kid, and it was so much fun to watch him communicate with people, and they would be talking about the trip, and there would be a pamphlet and so forth, tangible things that you could hold in your hand and you could talk about. And uh, are, are travel agents as popular? You know, I think it's sort of like the cruise lines, right? You've got the, the ships getting bigger, you've yeah. got the ships getting smaller. So the, with travelers, you've got some people want to automate everything and want technology to do everything mm. and they want to do it all themselves. And then you've mm -hmm. got other people that realize the value of having somebody who can hold your hand. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people don't realize, same thing with, like, sort of like with travel insurance. Everyone mm. thinks it's expensive. Everyone mm -hmm. thinks you're going to get ripped off by a travel agent. Mm -hmm. But you know, because your dad did it, sure, right? Sure. They actually are going to help get you deals. They're not getting paid yeah. by you so, uh, most of the time. Like sometimes mm -hmm. they'll have a little fee mm -hmm. that they'll add on. Yeah. They're getting paid by the company to bring that company business. Absolutely. You sure. know, and so you might be booking on, you know, one of the online travel agencies. They're getting paid by the hotel. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, the you know, you're getting the same prices from a travel agent. You know, when you're talking about booking cruises, it's re it's a place where it's really hard to do on your own or to do online. And it's really nice because it's personal. Uh, it we is. used a travel agent when we were traveling to the south of France. And that person came with us, showed us different locations. I mean, it was worth every penny because, you know, you had firsthand information about where we were, history, and then bringing it to the best restaurants that they could find, interesting places to go, makes a huge difference. Well, and I think, too, when you go back to the topic of safety, yeah. it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got somebody who's looking out for you, and if you need to get out of wherever you are... I mean, mm -hmm. I, I went to Kenya with a company called Mikado Safaris. Mm -hmm. So it's a travel outfitter or operator. And one of the things that they did was when we were heading to the airport, they had a jump car behind our car just in case we broke down or something happened just oh, to cool. make sure that everything went off seamlessly. Well, we talk about safety. Right? Security. And security. Safety and security. You've got it right there. Sure. But I think, you know, with travel agents, they're also looking out for you. If, you know, you need to get out of somewhere for some reason, you've got somebody mm -hmm. who's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're just a generic number or person you know booking through an online agency it might not be quite as easy mm -hmm. again i'm yeah. not downing the online travel companies because they certainly are helpful i use them myself sure. but i think there's a big value to using an agent yeah, especially if you, especially if you're planning a more complicated mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. laura you know you you are a wealth of knowledge when we talk about travel but also lifestyle you're a lifestyle reporter and um just to open it up just a little bit for a while in terms of lifestyle, what's changed? What what kind of new trends should we be looking at in terms of the way people want to enjoy life? It may not necessarily be travel. It could be other experiences. Talk about that a little bit. Give us an overview. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, I think it kind of goes, I think it sort of dovetails with what I was talking about in terms of travel. I think people just want to enjoy life. You know, there's just this sort of excitement to be able to go to a restaurant mm. these days um, and, you know, have a wonderful meal uh, to go, you know, shopping. You know, and again, I feel like there's that sort of yin and yang that's happening in our life. Like, We've got, you know, Amazon.com and you can buy everything you need sure. there. Or you can buy things online. It's kind of a pain if yeah. you then have to, it doesn't fit, you have to return it. Mm -hmm. the, again, it's there's a value to going to a place yeah. and shopping in person. Um, 
but I do, but I do think that there again. I think that this sort of feeling that everybody has is just to really enjoy life and to not put off those things that you've been yeah. wanting to do. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm also hearing a lot of people doing something that we did not too long ago, and that is uh, bringing your family together, family reunions. Yes, I had a reunion of about 80, 90 people from my family. We all got together, and they came from different parts of the country. One time only, but we had a nice thing printed up with every, every name and, and all of the kids and, and the parents and the grandparents and so forth. And that was a wonderful memory. And I think a lot of people are thinking a lot about nesting these days as well. Travel is great, but also utilizing your home as the center of your life. And, and making memories there with your family and friends. I think you're right. I, I totally, I could not agree more. I think it is important. And mm. to spend time with those friends yeah. and get the friends together. You know, Laura, uh, I mentioned my dad, a little, little history, you know, of my, my father being in the travel business. Um, in the world of journalism, I wanted to bring this up because you have some history. Because your great-great-grandfather... I understand was a Civil War correspondent for the Chicago Tribune. Yes, he was. Tell us about that. I like that story. Um, yeah, he his um, we and we found this out sort of later, and it was so exciting. Um, his name is Al, was Albert Bodman, and he was a reporter for the Chicago Tribune during the Civil War, and he's been you know there's my dad was a huge history buff, and so he had done tons of research into him, and uh, you know he's mentioned in some books. There's articles that you can find really? so yeah it's really it's that was pretty cool that must make and you really feel proud it does and there's a stat there's a statue and now i don't don't press me as to tell you where yeah. but i've got it written down somewhere that he's that it was there's a statue somewhere that was dedicated to the reporters of the civil war and his name is his on name it is there? yeah which i need to do that's on my that's on my bucket oh, list to go check man, that out someday I, I i love talking with you you know when when i have people on the show you know we talk about a particular subject and we bounce around a little bit and i always ask people you know my guests a couple of questions that you can just pass along um uh, as a parent, you know, as, as a person who's been involved in family life and understanding how, what it's like to raise children, if you had some advice for a newborn baby uh, from your experience in life, it doesn't have to be about travel, it could be about anything, to say, you know what, I, I'd like to impart this information to a newborn today that they can use perhaps some time in their life. What little nugget of wisdom do you have that you want to share with a little baby. Oh, that's such a good yeah. question. Um, well, my advice would be just to do what you love mm. and to follow your heart always. And I'll never forget when I was in college and I was thinking about doing journalism and a friend of mine said to me, why would you do that? You know, journalists don't make any money. And she wanted to be a lawyer. And she said, I'm going to become a lawyer because... I want to live the lifestyle that I've become accustomed to. Her dad was a lawyer yeah. and she became a lawyer. And I'll never forget then later on her saying, wow, I really don't like this. Mm -hmm. And I only did it for the money. And I wish I would have followed my heart and did something I love. And That's I, and advice. I do feel that way. And I think the money will follow if you, yeah. if you're doing something you're that you love and that you're passionate about. Mm. So yeah, there, that's my there's advice. There's no comparison to it. I mean, you really have to feel that you're happy you know, with what you're doing, that you have a natural desire. Uh, there's, there's a great line that I use often, don't strive for success, strive for significance. Oh, I like that. Do something, you know, that makes you feel like I, I, I'm trying to make the world a better place. You can still be good at what you do and, and be successful, but strive for significance, something that has purpose and value. Did you enjoy this? That's good. That's yeah. a good, that's a good, I'm going to use that quote. I'm stealing that one. <laughs> All right. So laurabegleybloom.com. People can go to that site, get a lot of information and you can share whatever you want. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ernie. Happy travels. Happy travels All to you. All good things to you and your family. Thank you for having what me. What a great guest. <laughs> I really loved having you here. Come back again. I will. All right. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.